Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for once again, your mercy, God. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit of the Holy Ghost, God, that will enlighten us, that as we read, God, your word, it comes alive in our life, God. Lord Jesus, it's not stale. It's not um, something of, of any other book, amen, any other word, amen, but your word bring life, amen. And we just ask you, God, for the families, God, for those that are listening and those that would listen, God, at a later time. We pray, God, for those, God, that are seeking you. God, there are millions today going to churches, synagogues, uh, Catholic churches, uh, uh, mosque, amen, all over the world, all over the country, God. God, le looking and seeking after you, Lord. And God, we just pray, God, that this truth, God, your word through your Holy Ghost of your revealing, oh God, of your truth, God, in your spirit, God, would break forth, God, as the noonday, God, in the minds and hearts of those who are listening, God. We just praise you, we thank you, and we give you all the glory and honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Thank you again, amen. We have obeyed the, the 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 message of the Lord this morning. Uh, this could be a part two. I believe it's going to be because there's other subjects and there's just not enough time in, in one setting to, to really give it just due. Amen. The words of Jesus. Amen. So I just want you to know that this is, this is follow me part one. Amen. And that's what Jesus said, John 21 and 19. Um, we we want to we want to look at the character of Jesus this morning. We we want to we want to see what what Jesus. Amen. Again, if you listen to last week, wolves in sheep's clothing. Amen. How and who Jesus is, and and how he, Amen, is the one that is actually we can't deviate from Jesus. Jesus, his words, the Bible said will judge us in the last day. Amen. So I just want you to know today, this morning, amen, that his word, his name shall be praised. He is above all, through all, and in you all, the Bible says, to those that believe, amen. So as we read the gospel of Jesus, amen, from four vantage points, amen, not only does the character of Jesus come forth, but the emotions, amen the emotions of Jesus comes forth. Amen. And I hope that this is getting out to you okay. Um, I don't want to be uh, reverbing and all that stuff, but uh, I trust that it is. Amen. So anyhow, but the emotions and the, the, the effects of those that wrote about him, amen, that the stories came to us from, amen, both his life as humanity, but especially his compassion authority, and genuine love as a God, as the God, the only God. Literally, it bleeds through everything that was recorded. Amen. So as we go through some scriptures today, outside of the prophecies, we, we piece together from the coming of Jesus, from the seed of a woman to bruise the head of the serpent in Genesis, to Isaiah 9 and 6 unto us, a child is given, a son is born, his birth to the delivering of the long-awaited promise of his spirit to dwell, live in man, no longer to dwell over man or just as an anointing to sit on or temporarily move on man, but to dwell in man as it appeared in the holiest of holies, a man of the tabernacle plan. Amen. So when we look at that, we, we look at the, the coming of Jesus Christ today. Amen. Of what we have, the Bible says, in earthen treasures, in earthen vessels. We, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Amen. And I am so thankful for that today. The earthen vessels that we have it in, that is our body. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that we, we would modify the deeds of the body, amen, to fit holiness standards for Jesus so that we would be ready for his soon coming, amen. So, <coughs> excuse me a minute, but thank you, Lord, for your mercies, God, your grace, amen, and all the things, God, that you have brought before us, amen, and given to us, 
Amen. So I am very thankful and happy today to be in Christ. Amen. And that he would be in me. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. So anyhow, as we traverse some scriptures this morning, we hope God will reveal to you through both his word and by his spirit, he is bringing forth by just a willing vessel, pleased to be used. Amen. And that would be me this morning. Amen. That through his grace, amen, and his favor, that I might be able to be used. Amen. And I asked God many times that he would use me as a vessel unto honor. Amen. And not unto dishonor. Praise God. And I just want to please him. Amen. In the power and the glory of his might. Amen. So through the four gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, plus a small portion of the beginning of the book of Acts, until his servant John in the prophecy book of Revelations. We see recordings of Jesus himself. Amen. What he said, red letter words, praise God, if you will. But when we see John 21 and 19, and I just wanted to bring this up because this is, this is what we're, we're focusing on this morning. Amen. And, and, and it says that, let me get this. Uh, okay, there we go. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And I'm not going to go into the whole context here, uh, but matter, rather than the word, and when he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. Now, he's talking to Peter specifically here, but we do know that by Jesus' own words that he said, pick up your cross and follow me. If any man come after me, he said, then they must follow him. Amen. So that's, that's what we're talking about this morning, praise God. So anyhow, that's where we're at with that. And let me get back. All right. So follow me, he said. So it is told Jesus began his ministry around the age of 30. That's, that's, that's where we climb into some of the scriptures here. Amen. Although Luke 2, 41 through 52 tells of the child Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem when he was 12 years old, sitting in the midst of the doctors. Amen. And, and both asking and answering their questions, and, and they were astonished at him. When his parents asked why <clears throat> or what, why he stayed or, or kind of hung back, he replied to them, I must be about my father's business. That was a capital F as in father on that word in the scripture. And he said, I must be about my father's business. Amen. And as a child raised by his parents, amen. And let me make sure again, I'm um, hoping that we're coming through, amen, in the microphone here. Um, and as a child raised by his parents, he grew in wisdom, stature, and in favor with God and man, the Bible says. Amen. We receive somewhat of a hint here, similar to Moses, that Jesus kind of paired off with the way Moses was, was brought to save his people. Amen. That God had chose Moses to deliver the, the children of Israel, uh, what we call in the book of Exodus, by the name Exodus, exiting from the Egyptian rule, amen, and the slavery that they put them in, amen, but Moses was called out to do that, amen, and that was Moses to a people, but Jesus, in his humanity, began to see and feel his true purpose, uh, in, in this case, to mankind, in Moses' case, to his own people, uh, which we, we look at types and shadows, the Bible says, of things to come, the Old Testament brings to us, amen, all right, so one of, the, one of the things we want to talk about is fulfillment of prophecy concerning Jew, the Jews. That's where Jesus comes in here. Amen. John 1 and 1, the Bible said, he came to his own and his own received him not. That's what John says in, in, in John 1 and 11. Amen. And when we look at the prophecy, Jesus, we know, was in the old law, under the old law, if you will. Amen. As the flesh. And you understand why I say as the flesh, because he in the in the supremacy of God himself being robed in flesh had all power, amen, to break through. And we're going to talk about that breaking through from the law, amen. And you'll see why I'm saying 
that he was under the law through the flesh. Amen. Through the flesh, he was under the law to do the will, amen, of the prophecy concerning him. Amen. And Isaiah 53, verse 2 said, He shall grow up as a tender plant. Amen. A root out of dry ground. Amen. And this, this is a drastic change to come that is, that is being hinted here, prophesied. Amen. That he would be a tender plant as a child. Amen. Reared up and raised up. Amen. And, and, and come out as a root out of dry ground. What does that mean? That was foretelling that he was going to just upset a lot of people. He's going to upset the whole law. The old law was going to be replaced. That's what it's alluding to here. Amen. He, the Bible says, will be common as humanity. He will be hated, rejected, and not respected. Amen. It foretells those things about his person. Amen. He will be wounded, bruised, chastised. Amen. He will carry our sorrows. He will be smitten of God and all our iniquities and transgressions will go to his blame. Amen. That's what is foretold. Amen. That what that is what Isaiah 53 is letting us know. That this Jesus, amen, that is about to come on the scene, this God robed in humanity flesh, amen, is about to come forth as a tender plant, a root out of the dry ground, amen. What is the dry, why would it talk about that? The dry ground in the law in that it was not able to remove sin. The hope of the law was very bleak by contrast of the grace that would come by Jesus Christ. Amen. We are in this day. Amen. We are in this grace. Amen. We have come to this time. Amen. This place. Amen. Where we can call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He is atonement for our sins and judgment to as many as should believe on him as the scripture hath instructed and out of belief shall flow rivers of living water through the gift of the Holy Ghost, the rest of whom he shall cause the weary to rest. You can find that in John seven thirty eight. Praise God. Amen. The old law of Moses. Amen. We talk about Hebrews 10 and 4. Amen. That not possible to remove sin. The old law. Amen. The man. The tabernacle. Amen. The, the, the natural circumcision. The priesthood. Or man-made ordinances were being replaced by Jesus Christ. By a new and living way. Hebrews 10 and 20, 21. Amen. John. 12. John 1 and 17, my apology. The law was by Moses, but truth and grace came by Jesus Christ. Amen. That's where we're at today. That's what we are looking at. That is where we are. Praise God. Amen. 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 And when you look at this, Luke 16 and 16 says the law and prophets were until John. Amen. John the Baptist. Amen. That began Jesus' ministry as he was baptized, praise God, by John in the water. Amen. And as the dove ascended down and the voice came from heaven in this is my beloved son. This is my sacrifice. Amen. In whom I am well pleased to do so, God said. Amen. This is the flesh that I have chosen to take to a lonely tree, amen, on a hill, Golgotha, amen, troubling, amen, the scripture, amen, in the book of Acts, where we look, amen, on some of these situations, uh, while Jesus himself was under the law of Moses, amen, did Jesus, amen, ever get angry, amen, did he ever have situations, as we talk to about the character of Jesus today as we look and see where Jesus said, follow me. Are you following Jesus today? Amen. Again, as we go through, 
Romans 10 and 4 said, Christ, for Christ is the end of the law. Amen. Excuse me. Excuse me. Amen. So Christ is the end of the law, the Bible says. Amen. And that's Romans 10, 4. Amen. 10, 4, good buddy. I've got that loud and clear. Amen. Amen. Romans 10, 4. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Amen. Jesus was the end of the law. Amen. It comes to Christ, to everyone that believeth, the Bible said. Amen. Praise God. Follow me, Jesus says. Follow me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, I'm going get, to get to some scripture here. Let me get my... So, troubling scripture, we want to point out today, Jesus never physically harmed anyone. Amen. And, and when we look at some of these things, did Jesus ever get angry and act against someone or something? Amen. How do we see the character of Jesus today? Where do we see Jesus, amen, in, in certain character forms? How would we uh, speak on his behalf today? What was written about Jesus? What was told about him? Amen. And that's what we need to look at today. We need to look at some of the things, amen, that are going to kind of give us a visual, amen, of who Jesus was, who Jesus is, amen. As we could go many, many areas in the Old Testament and we could look at how God moved amongst his people, Amen. And as we go through and we look at the accounts of Jesus Christ, amen, the, the name of Jesus, amen, the one that came as a babe lying in the manger, amen. And as we read that the age of 12 was, was astounding, the, the doctors and the lawyers, amen, and the, the, the well-educated in that day, amen, and, and, and proclaimed to his parents that he must be about his father's business. As he began to feel, amen, the anointing, amen, and the purpose, amen, of his coming at an early age, praise God, amen. As we look and see the areas where uh, Jesus interacted with people, amen, and we get to see a glimpse of who he is, as the Bible said that the books that should be written of him, that even the world could not fully hold Amen. Those things. Amen. And that would tell me that we have a God of eternity that is in that body. Amen. While under the law of Moses himself in the flesh, he saw thieves using the representation of a holy place of reading scripture, such as synagogues. Amen. A church, if you will, type building. They were selling sacrificial animals. Amen. They were trading. They were bargaining. They was making what he called the house of God into a den of thieves, what he would call a house of prayer, amen, that it is recorded in Matthew 21 and 12 and Luke 2 and 15, amen, as they began to say what they have seen, amen, when Jesus began to turn the money changers' tables upside down, amen, and when they asked what did he mean by his actions there, his reply was that, as his body would be destroyed as the building, amen. Yet it would rise again in three days. That was what Jesus told them, amen. That he was, if there was a meaning to be taken, is that what they were doing to that church, that, that synagogue, that physical building, would be what would be happening to his body, to his sacrifice brought to mankind. Amen, that they would begin to, to tear it up, amen, and to be using it as something that it wasn't meant to be, amen. Praise God, and as we read Isaiah, amen, that he would grow up, amen, he would be bruised, he would be wounded and chastised, he would carry our sorrows, he would be smitten of God, and all of our iniquities and trespasses would go to his blame, amen. So this raises much question, amen, to the validity of the spirit of Jesus, 
Amen. As, as we look at some of the troubling scripture later on, amen, in the book of Acts, amen, Jesus never physically harmed anyone, but always healed and made better. So when we look at that, when we look and we ponder some other scripture, amen, as we go into the book of Acts, praise God, and we look at some of the, some of the stories, some of the relations of things that had been uh, uh, recorded and given to us, amen, we have to look, amen, and as I said before in last week, amen, we must use this scripture, amen, as it is intended, amen, it says to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. It is very, very important for us to rightly divide the word of truth. Amen. He said to study to show thyself. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Even the demons, amen, were granted access to the swine when Jesus cast them out. Amen. What had Jesus done? Amen. Was there areas where Jesus himself became violent? Amen. I know not any. Amen. He spoke with authority. He spoke with power, praise God. He was the authority. He spoke to the storm, and it ceased to be storming. Amen. He spoke to the waters that were, were, were turbulent, and they became calm. Amen. He spoke to the wind, and it became still. Amen. He spoke to the blind, and they were able to see, praise God. Amen. He spoke to the lame, and they were able to walk. Amen. Praise God. He exercised that authority. Amen. For good. Amen. And, and, and again, as we were talking last week, where man will begin to deceive you. Amen. They will begin to say and do whatever they can to move you against who Jesus really is. Who Jesus came for us to be. Amen. So when you are faced with some of these other teachings, amen, that many men want to bring you under their power and control in the religions of our day, amen, said study to show thyself. Again, we must look at the scripture through the eyes of the Holy Ghost. We must lean, amen, on the spirit of God. Amen. The one that he sent back that said he would teach us. Amen. He would lead and guide us into all truth and righteousness. Amen. So when we look at some scriptures back in the book of Acts, where a story is told of Ananias and Sapphira. Amen. A husband and a wife. Amen. Were said to have held back money. Amen. Amen. This. Amen. Talking about money. Amen. And said that they lied about the price. Amen. To the apostles. And it says that they died for lying to the Holy Ghost. My friend, when I read this, I must compare it to Jesus. I must look a little deeper. I must have question. Amen. Because nowhere do I see in the representation, both deeds and spirit of Jesus, did anything like that ever happen? There is no accounts of Jesus killing anyone, halting, maiming, blinding anyone. So when you look at that, red flags should go off. And those that continue to teach and preach these things for fear should be ashamed of their self because they are not rightly dividing the word of truth. You must run it past your Holy Ghost. You must run it past, amen, the spirit of truth, amen. 
when you look at that, you see that somehow, some way, that this must raise question to validity of the spirit of Jesus and should not be accepted as any more than someone going off script. Why do you say that? Because even the demons were granted access to the swine by request when Jesus cast them out of a man. And you find that in Matthew 8 and 28. Find me a place where Jesus did the opposite. Find me a place where Jesus hurt others. Amen. He said, I come not to judge. I come not to bring judgment. Judgment that he was talking about would be to give you reward for your actions. Amen. Amen. So don't tell me, the Holy Ghost, that that is the spirit of Jesus. Amen. Sent back with the fruits. Amen. Is killing anyone. When you look at the fruits of the Spirit, praise God. Amen. When we look at those things, we cannot, amen, in good conscience or under any teaching by things as such. Amen. It is very blatant against the teaching of Jesus. What we have been trying to show you, amen, as last week, amen, you've seen that, that there are wolves in sheep's clothing, amen. Man will get some things wrong, amen, and you cannot be apostolic. You must be Jesus. Because you cannot allow to serve yourself to serve the creature over the creator. Amen. We must, amen, adhere to the words and the accounts of Jesus. That was one, one troubling scripture there. And again, is why we will be going into a second part, and possibly more in the future. Amen. Because we are trying to raise awareness. Amen. Raise the spirit of Christ against, amen, the, the spirits that would come against the teaching of Jesus Christ. Amen. We must hear Jesus. We must be in the power of his might. We must follow him. As he said, follow me. Amen. So, what's another one? What's another misnomer? What's another, who did Jesus leave in charge? Do you know who Jesus left in charge? Amen. Do, do you know what the Bible teaches? Who did Jesus leave in charge? Well, we have several um, teachings with several teachings of who Jesus left in charge. You see, the religion of today, the Catholic religion, believes it was Peter. And his authority was transferable to the Pope. Unto this very day, that is believed and taught. UPCI and others, ALJC, uh, Pentecostals, uh, they vary. Protestants, um, anything that's not Catholic, they vary. However, many call themselves apostolic because like the Catholics, they believe the, the group of apostles were, to pa were passed on that authority. Now, let me give you some warning here. Red flag should just go out everywhere. If man could have done this thing, God would not have had to come himself. 
if Abraham couldn't do it, if Moses couldn't do it, if, if, if Noah couldn't do it, if Solomon couldn't do it, if David couldn't do it, then Peter, Paul, John, Mark, James, none of them could do it either. And if you read through the writings, you'll see that they knew they couldn't. As we, we touched on last week about in Acts 15, James said, well, we, we can't teach them people that, that they must be circumcised and uh, adhere to the law. He said, our fathers and, and we couldn't even do the law. Why would we put such a burden on them? That's in your Bible, Acts 15. That was James himself after the council. So when we look at these folks to point out the overriding of the gospel accounts of Jesus himself, these groups, these religions have, have made themselves, they have carved out themselves a good deal. They have carved out themselves a place of authority. They have twisted, they have used the words of Scripture, amen, without filters of the Holy Ghost and, and the, the, the Spirit of Jesus, the words of Jesus. They have pretty much overrode them by the epistles, the letters to the apostles, of the apostles. And as we talked before uh, about the manuscripts and, and, and how some of this came about, and again, I, I want to emphasize that I am in no way discrediting the actual writings that made it to us. They're there. But not everything is to do. Not everything it says is to do. Others point out the fallacy of man. And that is why it was so important to Jesus to send back the Holy Ghost. And that is so important for us to adhere to because it is the guide. It is the teacher. Jesus himself, that spirit that he said, I will send back to you. Amen. So. To verbally accept Jesus in your heart, as others in the Protestant belief have uh, been teaching, it's a very loose believe, belief. They believe that confession, where does that sound come from? Sounds like the Catholics. Catholics have their own religion. They have a whole different Jesus. They have a Mary. They have they have uh, a lot of lot of uh, idol type things. They uh, so I, I'm not gonna. I don't have time to get into that today. We we've talked about some of it in the past. Uh, no matter what, you must repent, and that's what Jesus said: repent and be baptized. Amen. Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. Except you convert, amen, and except you change, amen, not just a verbal, but a life change, amen. Except you follow me, amen. You cannot see the kingdom of God, amen. So, Back to what Jesus said himself on a subject, amen, of who he left in charge. So when we look at the scripture, and I'm going to bring the scripture up. We have three scriptures, and, and the Bible said by two immutable things, let every word be established uh, at the mouth of two or three witnesses. 
That's how people could be condemned to death. Amen. And the law of Moses. And so it is. Uh, many look at that today as saying that is the bar. Amen. That we must reach. Amen. To to uh, validate things. Um, many of these um, uh, laws, I should say, um, pulled over and brought forth and, and read a certain way in the New Testament, such as obey them that have the rule over you. Amen. We, we'll probably get to that one next week. Uh, but, but we're going to talk about some of this. We're going to talk about the hierarchical. Who did Jesus leave in charge? Or did he? So when we, when we start here, and, and, and I want to just go right now to, to Matthew 20, verse 20, and we're going to start at the top here, and says, Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? What do you, what do you want? And she said unto him, Grant that my two sons sit, that they could sit, the one on your right hand and the other on the left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what you ask. Are ye able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized? What he was meaning here was, Are they going to die on the cross? Are they going to be able to take the sins of the world away? No, they would not be able to. All right, so we're, we're going we're gonna to advance through. And he says, and Jesus answered and said, that's what we just read. They say unto him, we are able. They said, we can do it. And he said unto them, ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to set on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my father. All right. So here we are. And when the 10 heard it, this is the other apostles. Now we're it's 12 apostles, right? They were moved with indignation. They were ticked off. They were angry against the two brethren for having their mom or, or their mom even answering this. <laughs> so when they were, we, they, they were very upset that they would, they would even, that their mom would even say something like this. And, and verse 25, Verse 25, but Jesus called unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the earth, of the Gentiles, exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. Verse 26, get this and, and write it. But it shall not be so among you. But so whoever will be great among you, let him be your ministers. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Now I want to take your, your, your thoughts here to the Last Supper, as we call it. Amen. When Jesus told Peter the famous story that you have to wash my feet, and, G and Peter said, no, that's not happening. You're the master. I'm the servant. You I'm supposed to wash your feet. And Jesus said, if you don't wash my feet, you'll have no part from me or with me. Amen. So when you look at those things, when you look at the character, amen, and the thoughts and the words of Jesus, and Jesus, his whole point here was that there's no hierarchy here. I'm not looking at one above the other. You're not going to get preferential treatment here. It's not going to happen. Amen. That's what Jesus just told the disciples and the woman, the mother, amen, of John and James. Amen. So when we look here, we are going to go to the next one. You know, where by the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every uh, word be established. We're going to look at another scripture here. Amen. Even though Matthew, Matthew was written after the book of Mark, may have been, been uh, mimicked. It could have. I don't know. Um, but regardless, let's go to Mark 10 and let's go to 43. All right. So here we go. 
Now, let's, let's look again. Here, here's a similar story. Let's, let's, let's move up here. Um, and James, is, this is the same story, which might have been, um, if you've listened to some of our other, other uh, messages, it might have been taken from Mark, the Matthew version that we just read. It says, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee, come unto him, saying, this verse 35, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatever we shall desire. And he said unto them, what would ye that I should do for you? What, what do you want me to do? And they said unto him, grant unto us that we may sit. So this is a little di different version. It was the mother of, of, of the sons of Zebedee, which was James and John, and, and Matthew that came and asked. Now we look at, they said unto him, grant unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, you know not what you ask. Can you drink of the cup? And again, we're, we're going right back through here, right? Um, so let's, let's advance down to um, uh, 42. But Jesus called them to him. So let, me, let, me, let me get everybody together here. And, and, and let, me, let me make this very clear to you. Verse 42, ye know that ye which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles, ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. Ruling, 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 get it? And their great ones exercise authority upon them. Now, 43, but so shall it not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be the servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give life his life for a ransom for many. So here we are, Jesus, in two occasions, Matthew and Mark, and, and as I say, uh, two, two, two or three, the voice of two or three, let every word be established. So Let's just say that maybe Matthew copied off a of mark. And you say, well, that would be only one. Okay, well, let's, 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 let's see what Luke has to say. Because Luke has a similar uh, story of Jesus, right? And we're going to go to Luke 22. And we'll, we'll pick up in verse 25. Probably go up a little bit higher. Okay. So when we look here. So this this was during the, the Last Supper where we were. Amen. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying this cup is the New Testament of my blood. Okay. And then let's let's advance to 23. And they began to inquire among themselves. Okay. This was at the supper. What we call the Last Supper. And, and they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing. And they were talking about, the, um, I believe, the betrayal. And, and there was also strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest, right? And he said unto them, who? Jesus. Red letter words coming at you, all right? He said, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. So they're benefiting from their servants, okay? Well, just like you going into work and there you got a boss, right? And he said, verse 26, but ye shall not be so. Listen here, guys. Not going to happen that way in my kingdom. And he went on to say, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and that he that is chief as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at me or he that serveth is not that he sitteth at me. But I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. All right? So here again, Jesus points out that your attitude, that your, I do not have respect to persons. 
And that leads us to the scriptures in the Bible that God is not a respecter of persons. And where James talks about if, if you respect a person, are you become evil in judging others? Amen. And when you add it all up, when you go through who Jesus is, what he did, amen, how he treated the apostles, amen, how he treated the common man, how he treated, did he go against, did he say, oh, you're a slave here? Why would Moses lead his children away from bondage? Amen. Just to put man back into bondage under man. You got to ask yourself those questions. You got to wonder. You got to know that he wouldn't do that. So I've given you three scriptures here in this in this second question of who did Jesus leave in charge? Now you tell me. What was the duty? What was the commission of the disciples, the apostles? Amen. What was their duty? What was they commissioned to do in Matthew 28 and 19 and other of the gospels? To go and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You tell others about me. Amen. If you want to be with me, you must follow me. Amen. Today's religion has hierarchy. Amen. There is a step. Amen. In as the Gentiles, as Jesus talked about, as the heathen, as the natural, but the spiritual kingdom will not be such, he said. It will not be that way in my kingdom. Amen. You will not be above one another. Amen. You will be as brethren, amen. And we touched on some of this in last week's message, amen. But today's religion, uh, starting with the Catholic, who professes the Pope at the top, he is granted the authority as they move through the Popes in, in history that Jesus gave Peter at that exact moment when he had the keys to the kingdom. And we touched on this last week, uh, where he had the keys to the kingdom. This was a temporal. This was temporarily given to Peter because the Holy Ghost moved on Peter to announce and pronounce, amen, the keys to the kingdom of heaven as he gave it to us in Acts 2 and 38. That said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That was what was temporal. Amen. Jesus would not have gave man permanent authority and given that over because he had to come. He could have done that from heaven. Amen. But he did not. But as the Pope is the top and feels that he has the ultimate authority even to change the word written by the apostles, the cardinals come into a close second, the bishops, the priests, the deacons, and finally the laity or the members or the brethren of the church who hold the majority, amen, of that organization. Amen. So, Protestant religion, which defined by anyone, that is outside of the Catholic teaching, amen, is normally bishops over a group of pastors and their churches, pastors, elders, deacons, and laity members who are tithed or giving a tenth of their income to the religion. These all violate the very words and edict of how Jesus said his kingdom would exist. Follow me. Amen. Are you following Jesus today? I, I, I want to know, are you following Jesus today? Are you obeying his word? Is his words living out in your life? Are you giving your, amen, life to Jesus? Amen. I want you to know that you must, amen, be born again. 
You know what being born again is? It's being born outside of the flesh. It's not a man following a priesthood anymore. Any longer, you are now a man, a child of God. You are being led by the Spirit of God. He said they that have the Spirit of God are become the sons of God. Amen. I want you to know, amen, that Jesus is the teacher through the Holy Ghost. Amen. He is the one that we must, amen, adhere to. We cannot, amen, we cannot be, amen, any less than following Jesus today. Amen. So join with me today. Uh, we are going to follow up on this. We are going to go into other subjects. If there is something that you would like for us to further expound on, I want you to to send a message, amen, amen, in, 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 in Facebook, you can do that, you can go onto our website, amen, jesusnameministries.org, you can reach out there, amen, you, you can, uh, again, there are multiple ways to reach out, um, we would love to help you, amen, understand the word of God, we want you to have the Holy Ghost, we want the Holy Ghost to teach you, amen, so next week, Lord willing, We'll get into what Jesus did and what he didn't say about other topics, like giving in the old law, tithing, altars, repentance, and other questions. Amen. So I just want you to know that I appreciate you being here with us today. Amen. Thank you for listening with us today. And, and we're, we're going to continue, amen, uh, the teaching and, and, and working for the kingdom, amen, trying to bring to life, amen. Words of Jesus, amen. The words of life, amen. So let's, let's go out of here with, with song and, and praise in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, praise God. So.